Our scripture is taken from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 14. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of glory and of God spirit of glory and of God rests on you. And also from the fifth chapter, verses six through eleven. Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Your end's reading of our lesson. In our scripture for today, we find the Apostle Peter writing to the early Christians, and he's writing to tell them that they should expect things to be hard for them, to remind them that they can expect that they will be persecuted because of their beliefs, and that they should rejoice in their suffering as they share those with Christ. Now, up until Peter reminds us and them that uh, Jesus is with them in their suffering. This does not seem like a very happy message, does it? You know what? You're going to have to suffer. You're going to be reviled. You're going to have people that don't like you because of your face, and you're going to face difficulties. Oof, if that was the end of his message, I have to wonder how effective it would be in bringing people to Jesus. I know that in our culture, we tend to value people that are straightforward in what they say, right? We like it when someone says what they mean and means what they say. But that is exactly what Peter is doing here. He is straightforward and not sugarcoating anything. You will have troubles in your life. You will encounter difficulty you will need to be prepared for the bad things that may come and you need to be on the lookout for the devil and his temptations again i say that if this was the whole message it doesn't sound very appealing does it i mean if you stack it up against something like this you're never going to have any problems everything is always going to be rainbows and sunshine and i'm pretty sure you're going to win the lottery at least every other day if you feel like uh, playing it those days. You're never going to struggle. Your body isn't going to break down and you don't have to worry about temptations because you already have everything you want and you can't be tempted if you have everything that you want, right? Well, that would be a much more compelling thing to hear, wouldn't it? It is, but here's the thing. Even the most optimistic person should be able to look at that statement of life saying that nothing ever bad will happen and think, well, you know, that sounds good, but I don't think that is how things work. But the wonderful news is that Peter begins, the way that he begins what he's telling them and us is not the way that he ends what he is telling them and us. You see, he tells us, yes, there are problems. Yes, there are temptations. And yes, there are hardships that you will face. However, you don't need to worry. What? You just told me all the bad things that are going to happen and now you're telling me I don't need to worry about them? Do you hear yourself, Peter? 
Of course I'm worried. You just told me I'm going to suffer. And then you told me not to worry. Can I at least worry a little bit about the things that I'm going to suffer in this life? Well, Peter would say no. Not just no, but no, and here is why. Cast all your anxiety, or in the King James Version, cast all your cares upon him, upon God, because he cares for you. That is why we do not need to fear. That is why we do not need to hold ourselves in a state of constant anxiety, because we have a God that cares about us. We have a God that cares about all our cares. And we can cast them aside and give them to him. Now I know those of us that are Christians have said those words so many times. Lord, I am giving this to you. Lord, I am casting my worries aside because you care for me. The problem for us is this. See, we do tend to give our cares and anxieties up. And then, well, sometimes we want to take them back. Think of it like this. Have you ever thrown away something that you had an attachment to? Like your favorite shirt. You loved it for years. You wore it all the time. At this point, it has so many stains on it that it was white when you bought it. But now it's a sort of reddish brown color. Uh, there are so many holes in it, you can't even count them anymore. And it's so bad that you can't even repurpose it and use it as a rag. So you put it in the garbage one day because you'd be embarrassed if you donated it and, you, and someone found out that it was yours. So you finally make that painful decision that you need to throw it away. The garbage truck comes, picks it up, goes, all, goes along, collects all the other garbage, goes to the landfill, pours it in a big pile of garbage, and then leaves. However, you start to think, ooh, I really love that shirt. I think I'll go and find it. And you go to the dump, and you dig through all the other garbage, and you find your old shirt, and you put it back on because it made you feel comfortable. You see, we do that with our anxieties and cares as well. We give them up to God. He agrees to take them away from us. And then we say, you know what? I know they aren't really good for me, but they were comfortable. I think I'm just going to go ahead and take those back, Lord. Never mind that they're useless and tainted and probably giving me a rash at this point. I've held on to them for so long. I need them to feel comfortable. Brothers and sisters, it is time to start giving those anxieties and cares up to God and then walking away from them. Stop taking them back from him. Why do we take them back from him? Do you think that God can't handle them? Do you think that he doesn't know what to do with them? The creator of all things, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega, do you think you know better than him and how to deal with all the things that are weighing you down? Hopefully that is not why we try to take those anxieties back. You know, in our suffering, sometimes we say to ourselves, and I'm guilty of this as well, there's no one else that will understand what I'm going through. There's no one else that will think what I am dealing with is important. There's no one else that has ever felt the way that I do. Well, in verse 5, 9, Peter dispels that thought for us. He tells us, your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering that you are. Your brothers and sisters in Christ are going through what you are, or they have gone through what you have. Or at the very least, they can understand what you are going through. Church, we have to stop being the sort of people that try and go through all the suffering the world has for us on our own. I know, again, in our culture, 
We are people that value those that persevere through tough times. We are those that, we, we admire those that keep a stiff upper lip and move on. Now there is a time for that. There is a time for pushing on and pushing through. We don't need to come to God or our brothers and sisters in Christ when we uh, have to throw out our favorite shirt, right? But when we are dealing with those truly hard things in life, we have a God that we can cast them upon. And we should have brothers and sisters in Christ that are going to support us through those difficult times as well. So let us make sure that we are committing ourselves to loving one another, helping one another when those hard times come our way. Know that you have people here that are willing to be with you and listen to you and do their best to help you during those hard times. And know that there is a God that wants to take your cares and your anxieties away from you if you will just let him. Now, I know it's easier to just say those words, I get, God, I give it up to you, than it is to follow through on those words. I don't believe that it will come to any of you that have been in church over the past few months or even years uh, as a surprise to you when I tell you that I went to annual conference this year with a lot of anxiety. I will fully admit to you that I was worried. I was worried that we wouldn't be able to sit in a room with each other and do the business of the church this year. I was worried that those that were leaving the church on Wednesday night were going to do so in a spirit of anger. I was worried that those that were staying in the United Methodist Church would boo their brothers and sisters in Christ and turn their backs on them in disapproval when they chose to leave. I was worried that the divisions and the hurts that have arisen over the question of a disaffiliation would be too much for us to handle. I was worried. You see, up until this week, all the discussions and thoughts about disaffiliation and, and those leaving had mostly been at a distance. You know, most of the things that I had heard had come through the grapevine. Did you hear so-and-so is leaving? Did you hear such-and-such such church is leaving? But this week, it was going to be right in front of my face. This week, it was going to be in person. Now, I'm not the sort of person that writes things on the internet or says them over to the phone that I wouldn't say to someone's face. But I realized that we were going to be there, and some had done that to others this week, and they were going to be sitting in the same room with the people that they had talked about. And tensions were going to be high. Now, I wasn't worried that violence was going to break out. I don't think we are those sorts of people. But I was worried about this. What happens if someone witnesses two brothers or two sisters in Christ yelling at one another? What happens if we go and try and witness to people and they say, hey, aren't you part of that church that had that big meeting and the people were just yelling and threatening each other? I was worried if things went badly that it would damage Jesus in the eyes of others. I ask you all to pray for the conference year, this year. I ask you to pray for civility and for compassion. And I thank you for your prayers. Well, coming out of conference, I have to tell you this. I feel a great sense of shame. Not for how it went. Not for how we acted towards each other in this difficult time. But shame because I didn't remember to cast my cares to God. Shame because I didn't trust in him to allow us to do the work that needed to be done in a way that showed the love of Christ. 
Now, don't worry, I'm giving that up to God and giving them that shame. I'm walking away from it, and I'm not taking it back, I promise you. And I can do it easily this time because I was wrong. I was wrong to be worried. By and large, the conference went well. The churches and friends and colleagues that had chosen to leave did so. But they left, I believe, with a sense of hope and a sense of encouragement. Yes, there was sadness. There was sadness over the loss of connection with one another. But by and large, there was not anger. There was not animosity. There were no boos or hisses or just go ahead and get on out. That's what you want to do but just a sense of sadness over the loss, but also a hope for the future. As one of our Bible teachers told us during one of the presentations that was given, and it's interesting because I believe he kind of said this um, not as the main uh, idea of what he was teaching us, kind of a, almost a throwaway line as he was speaking, but uh, it stuck with me greatly. He told us, the churches that are leaving, God goes with them. And the churches that are staying, God is with us. We believe that he will continue to be with both of us. That he will continue to bless us all that are doing the work of his kingdom. To hear those words, brothers and sisters, I must tell you, my heart leapt. No longer the idea of side against side, but the acknowledgement that God loves those that left and God still loves those that stayed. I needed to hear that. And I think if you've been feeling the same way, you might need to hear it too. I want us to remember this. God wants us to take, wants to take on our cares and anxieties. He wants to do this for us because he knows we can't do it ourselves. He wants us to know that, yes, you will suffer at times, but once you take me on as your God, you will never have to do it alone. So, brothers and sisters, let's take out the trash in our lives. The things that we've held on to for too long and give them up to God and let him bless us with his presence. Let's help one another in those difficult times and let's lean on each other and on God as we move forward together. My challenge for you this week is this, give up your cares to God and then don't take them back. And perhaps even harder for us that are a proud people, if you need help from your brothers and sisters in Christ, ask for it. And if asked, that person the love that God has, they will show to you. Amen.